when is it time to gas out? Well, you know, is it one of those things? Is gear addiction gas? It's, it's multifaceted, right? It could be buying audio gear or video gear or both. It could be you just buy everything you can't afford or you can afford or can you afford all of it, but you don't use it. Or, you know, where are we at with gas, you know, gear acquisition syndrome. So here's the thing, like for myself, I get to the point where I can't actually buy anything else. And it's not financial because I use this equipment for work. I use the cameras to make commercials and, you know, I love learning and I love growing my creativity. And instead of going to college, I'd rather just buy a brand new camera or buy a piece of audio gear and really learn it inside and out. And I think the education that you get from that is absolutely priceless. With gear acquisition syndrome, it's when it goes too far. And I am 100% guilty of this, okay? For example, recently, I just upgraded to the brand new Sigma FP with the Mackie 35 lens that I, Sin lens, that I absolutely love. I think the picture that you're seeing me on right now is gorgeous. I love it. So, but as a backup, I also bought the Fuji uh, XC 35 millimeter, which is a great nifty 50. And you could see the two different angles in this video. And it does have color grading with DaVinci Resolve. And it will most likely be edited in Premiere Pro. Now, for example, just with what I just said, think about it logically. So I bought a backup lens without trying out the Mackie 35 and the Sigma FP brand new. The backup lens was for the Fuji X-T3. I, of course, had to buy additional lighting. Um, I'm using Premiere Pro, which if you buy the Creative Suite is $50 a month. But I also have DaVinci Resolve, but I don't want to learn DaVinci Resolve because I'm using Premiere Pro. And then I had to buy DaVinci Resolve, which wound up being another $495 because I was like, you know, let's get two license keys just in case I'm working with somebody on a project. Even though realistically, um, there's only going to be one person either color grading or really editing one video at a time for a very long time from today, right? And, you know, that, that was just one thing recently. So I upgraded my video card, uh, you know, from a 3080 to a 3090 Ti. All right, now let's stop there. All of these return periods are two to four weeks. I just bought or upgraded four different things in my studio in the last three to four weeks. Now, if I get stuck with the 3080 for a return, boom, that's $930 out the door. You know, if I get stuck with the Sigma FP and Mackie, which I happen to absolutely love, but that could have been a decent amount of money because I bought the Mackie lens used. Then the Fuji. I'm very happy with the Fuji. XC brand new lens, but now I want all Sigma FPs. I want all Sin lenses. Okay. Now let's talk about lighting. I have lighting at my front door right now that I didn't even wind up using in this setup. How am I justifying that purchase? I'm telling myself I'm going to use it for work in a, an interview that's coming up to film a small commercial. So that's what gas is. That's what gear acquisition syndrome is when you buy something, you get to the point where you're within these return periods because you're justifying the tool or the function that you need it. And then you start missing the return periods when you don't like something, or you don't even have time to open up the boxes. For example, two years ago for Christmas, I got the Ninja 5 by Atmos, which is a great monitor. Don't get me wrong. But I didn't use it for two years. My plan, which I also purchased the XS10 by Fuji, was since it only outputted 4K 10 bit, that I would record with the Ninja 5, allowing me to get an extra screen. Well, realistically, it was probably better for me just to get a Fuji XT3 and call it a day, which also recorded 10 bit 4K in H.265. Which, I, which, again, we can keep going back and forth with this, but now when you have two different cameras, two different looks, two different functions, it's hard to match everything, right? So that's where the gas kicked in. The Ninja 5 sat for two years, okay? 
So, you know, when you're at that point where you have all of this gear and it's all great, don't get me wrong, I love all this gear. I've been wanting to DJ a set for a really long time now. So now I'm starting to tell myself, okay, I'm going to start DJing on TikTok uh, one hour a day. Sure, where am I going to find this hour? Then I start thinking, okay, well, I should at least do one hour a week. All right? So this is what gear acquisition syndrome is. It's this constant battle to purchase items that you think is a tool that you need in your toolbox. But realistically, you probably have 10 times the tools you will ever need to take you know, your creativity to the maximum level. My recommendation, it's only at that point where you reach a wall in your creativity, where you're to a point where you cannot expand anymore. You can't do whatever it is you're trying to do anymore. That's when you upgrade. That's where you buy that new piece of gear. For example, now again, to defend myself, the Sigma FP was my first full frame camera. It's 12 bit, which is amazing. And it's my first Cine lens, the Mackie 35. Okay, I got it on sale. That was an upgrade I felt I needed, but still, I wind up buying like 50 things that I'm not using because then it needs, you know, diffusion. It needs this, it needs that, right? You know, to take down X amount of stops because the aperture is too, too high when it should be low because you're not getting the right bouquet. When you purchase something, make sure you absolutely need it. That is my absolute best advice. Don't buy cheap. Now, everybody does this, okay? Everybody buys something for $50. We see the same version online for $500. We see the same version online for $5,000. Understand the difference between the $500 version and the $5,000 version. Do not pick the $50 version, okay? When it comes down to studio lights, did you know that I found some of the cheaper studio lights will leave a mark on my face, highlights, whereas the more expensive studio lights are more balanced. The extra functions you get with this more expensive technology isn't there just to be like, oh, look, we sell you all these great extra features. It's there because it is required in a professional workflow. Those type of purchases make sense. One more example, the Model 1 mixer. Amazing mixer. That thing sounds amazing, is amazing, makes you a better creative, and does everything you wish your mixer could do and allows you to mix in ways that, you know, you find new ways every time you use it. It's just incredible. And it doesn't even nearly compare to a regular mixer. Is it twice the price? Yes. Is it actually cheaper than some of the top end digital mixers out there? Yes. But when it comes to compressors, Tenegulier Audio, their compressors sound better and it's cleaner and more powerful than some of those $5,000 models where now you can do that for one fourth of the price. Same quality, if not better, right? So, you need to be really sure. However, if I was to have a $50 mixer or a $200 mixer as a stepping stoner to get me into mixing pro DJ sets, that mixer would be unused very quickly. So you really need to determine what is gas, which is some of the examples I went, I've been going over where you know, you're overbuying, you can't open things, you can't get to that next best fun thing because you're stuck on something or a combination of buying too many tools where you just have endless tools, okay, and you didn't learn them, you didn't use them to the maximum ability, and they're just sitting, you know, plugins, you have a million plugins. And then on the flip side, when is it time to gas out? When is, you know, <laughs> when is it time to, is it gas, you know, is exciting, right? It's when you're at a point that you need to learn something new. You need to do put something in your studio you don't currently have, or you need that upgrade to continue working on the projects that you're already working on, either a faster or gain a new ability that all of your other software, all of your other tools, all of your other hardware doesn't currently have. That's when it's acceptable. So I hope this makes sense for you guys. Again, I'm guilty of it too. You know, this hobby, K 
can be, you know, just like buying an expensive race car that is a super declining asset. In retrospect, if you buy smart, if you buy used, you can recoup 95% of what you paid. Hey, hell, let's call it 90%. Not bad, right? If you spend 10 grand, you'll get 9,000 back 10 years from now. And then on the flip side of that, sometimes it goes up in value. Your rack has a funny way of going up in value. If you're buying smart, one other quick tip, buy the right things, buy only what you need, and it will last you a really long time. For example, just one more example, <laughs> your audio interface. Don't get a three channel when you really need a six channel. Don't get a six channel when you really need a 20 channel. Then you have the choice, right? You could buy two Apollos, which is a huge, uh, you know, marketing thing. And the quality is no different than the quantums that are out there that are four times cheaper. Okay. So just giving you guys a quick uh, example of when, when it's over gas, overdue gas, uh, you know, under, under gas or it's gas and you know, it's, it's good gas, you know? So anyways, all right, guys, good gas, underdue gas, over gas and, uh, you know, okay gas, right? All right. I'll see you guys in the next one. Check out my other videos. We're always going over cool topics. I'm really excited to talk about this one because I have to admit I'm a victim too. Uh, I love this stuff. It's a great hobby. And if you're like me, you'll find a way to make some money with it. So, uh, you know, my thing is commercials. Don't get me wrong. I love pro audio too. You know, pro audio can be a, a bit competitive. So little tip out there for you creators that also do video. You'd be surprised most likely in your area, the video market's a little underserved and it's an easy way to start making easy money, right? But you're not competing worldwide like you are a professional audio. Anyways, all right guys, see you guys in the next one. Check out my other videos, DJ Infect. Peace.